Hey everyone, Bear Brownies here. As many of you have requested, here's my long-awaited short sword guide. It took a lot longer to make than I originally hoped, as I wanted to be fully proficient in the class by unlocking all the abilities, including the ultimate, to level 3, ensuring that I can provide to you what I consider the most optimal build and playstyle. This video will be following a new format, which will be broken down into the following 5 chapters. Chapter 1. Stats to look for in a good short sword. Chapter 2. Attributes, runes, and how to analyze your your stats. Chapter 3. Meta Abilities. Chapter 4. Ability Combos. Chapter 5. Pros, Cons and Summary. And finally, to end the video, some gameplay. Make sure to check out the description below for the timestamps. Disclaimer. Although I have used the short sword in over 200 games, this is not my main weapon class. I will try my best to provide as much information as possible regarding what I think is an optimal setup based on my experience of using the short sword and shield in high level matchmaking, territory wars and ranked battles. If you think I have missed anything in the video, do let me know in the comments down below. Chapter 1. Stats to look for in a good short sword. When it comes to crafting a short sword, I recommend focusing on the following three attributes in order of the most importance. Number 1. Blunt damage. Blunt damage is in my opinion the most important attribute as all the meta abilities which I will be covering in chapter 3 are blunt damage only. I recommend looking for a short sword with at least 100 additional blunt damage or better. Number 2. Slashing penetration. Since the short sword has an extremely high basic attack rate but very low base slashing penetration, it is recommended that you look for a short sword with penetration of 150 or higher. This will allow your basic attacks to deal much more damage against heavily armored heroes and units. Number 3. Slashing damage or strength. You can either choose to run slashing damage or strength, which are both great to have. Although having around 15 or greater strength is nicer to have than just slashing damage, as this will increase your blunt damage too. If you are going for slashing damage, try to look for a weapon with 200 slashing damage or greater. Finally, do not settle for a weapon unless it's at least epic quality or higher. Chapter 2. Attributes, runes, and how to analyze your stats. Although attributes are important, you should not blindly follow a guide which tells you to put X amount of attributes into Y attribute. This is because armor and weapons can vastly vary depending on crafting RNG, which means that following a guide to a T will not necessarily give you the same stats. Therefore, I will be teaching you on what kind of stats you should be looking for in a short sword and heavy armor combination, as well as how best to distribute stats with the use of attributes and runes. To check out your stats, open your character page by pressing the P key. Beneath your attributes on the left, you can see what appears to be a sideways bar chart. Click on this to open up your stats. Here we can can see your health, damage, penetration and armor details. You can reset your attributes and apply them whilst having the details page open so you can see exactly how each attribute point will affect your overall stats. Since the short sword has such low base slashing penetration, if you wish to be able to do decent amount of damage with your basic attacks, it is recommended to have slashing penetration of at least 1600. If your short sword has bad or no slashing penetration, you can apply penetration runes and place points into agility to help you reach this goal. Armor is the most important trait of Season 7. With the introduction of runes, player damage have been immensely buffed whilst there are no runes which provide additional armor. Since you can apply health doctrines to increase your health at any time, you should only allocate attribute points into strength, agility and armor. This short sword build heavily relies on what kind of armor you have. When it comes to armor, you want to have a minimum of 850 for survivability. You can see here that with my normal siege battles armor, I have between 867 and 951 armor amongst the three defense styles. I also have a set with legendary armor pieces with no leadership, which I use exclusively for territory wars, free battles, duels and death matches, which provides me with armor stats between 971 and 976. I hope you can see the importance of always crafting a new piece of armor over reconditioning unless it requires fixing, as it is rare to have a piece which is both legendary and has leadership. Finally, once you have reached the recommended amount of slashing penetration and armor, you can place all remaining attribute points into strength, specifically for blunt damage. This rule applies for any additional runes you may want to add as well. If you look at my short sword, 
I am running only blue damage runes. This is because I think short sword specific runes are bad. The legendary one which provides damage buff and damage reduction to all nearby heroes and allies on a hero kill or assist is the only viable short sword rune. However, this only seems to activate when you get the assist or kill only if your hero has participated. So keep that in mind if you choose to run this rune. For the helmet, I always like to run the 800 HP purple rune followed by all blunt damage runes. And for the chest plate, I run both 5% damage buff and 5% damage resistance blue runes with the addition of a blue blunt damage rune. With my short sword build complete, you can see that I have a total blunt damage of 1015, which is huge, especially when combined with the Thunderstruck Ultimate's 401% base damage plus 3240 flat damage. This lets me hit up to 7000 pre-crit. To summarize, your goal with any short sword build is to do the following. Firstly, increase your slashing penetration to 1600 and then allocate points into armor to reach at least 850 armor. Place all remaining attribute points into strength and load up your weapon and armor with as much blunt damage doctrines as possible. Chapter 3. Meta Abilities. The four meta abilities to use for the short sword are number one, iron side, number two, throw shield, number three, shielded charge and finally for the ultimate thunderstruck for the purpose of this video i will only be describing abilities in their max level state of three ironside is a hero buff skill with a 24 second cooldown which increases your armor by 125 percent for eight seconds this ability deals a small amount of damage to everything around you albeit at a short distance and breaks free of concussion and daze which in layman's terms means any non-ultimate cc after the additional buff ends you receive a 15 percent armor debuff for 4 seconds. Ironside is considered one of the most important skills for the short sword as the increase in armor makes you essentially invincible for 8 seconds. This allows you to make plays and engage the enemy in a way that is not normally possible. Throw shield is an ability where you throw your shield at your enemy dealing a small amount of blunt damage. This ability is auto aimed and is thrown in the direction of the closest target that is directly in front of your hero and can hit in a line as it is thrown and as it returns back to you. When hit by the shield, all units and heroes are slowed by 50% for 4 seconds, including horse mounted heroes, whilst increasing your movement speed by 15% for 5 seconds. With a cooldown of only 8 seconds, this ability is great when used to stop heroes and units from escaping or advancing, and should be used as often as possible. Shielded Charge is a charge type ability which deals blunt damage when you hit a unit or hero, and knocks them down dealing some damage. If the charge ability lands against a unit or hero, you perform a second attack which deals massive amount of blunt damage. As the Shielded Charge has an additional effect of taking 90% reduced damage when charging, it is a great tool for either engaging in battles or escaping. Thunderstruck is one of the coolest ultimates in the game. This is where you essentially body slam your shield on the floor to deal massive amount of AoE blunt damage, breaking block and sending heroes and units alike flying. This ability can also be used to break free of days and increase your defenses by 4% for 20 seconds after it has been cast. Since this ultimate has a couple of second cast time where your hero will walk in the direction of your choice for a few seconds then slam the floor, you can cast this instantly by double tapping the ultimate ability key. Do note though that even when cast immediately by double tapping the ultimate ability key, there is some cast time and animation which can be abused to interrupt the ult. Finally, Horse Dismount. Like most dismount abilities, the Horse Dismount ability on the short sword CCs heroes and units when they are struck. Chapter 4 Ability Combos 1v1 Combat Against Heroes when fighting against a hero, you should always land your horse dismount ability for the CC effect. Then make sure to save your iron side to break free of any non-ultimate CC or to tank their ultimate. Since the basic abilities and the basic attacks of the short sword can be blocked by heroes, it is recommended that you throw your shield from a slight angle as this can go through block normally on its return. This allows you to use shielded charge to charge around the side of the hero and their block to knock them down, allowing you to follow up with at least three basic attacks. Alternatively, you can use the Thunderstruck ability to break a hero's block. However, due to the slow cast time and animation, and the ease at which the ability can be interrupted, Thunderstruck should always be combined with the Shield Throw ability. Always make use of the Throw Shield to help you land basic attacks in between combos, as your attacks may be fast but lack in reach. Against Charging Units When you see a charge incoming, you should activate Ironside, look for the biggest group of units, and activate Thunderstruck so that you run towards them. Activate Thunderstruck again as close as possible to the largest group of unit to stop their charge. This takes some practice to master, 
but can be extremely satisfying when pulled off. Normal fights. Always make sure to activate Ironside at the start of a fight, and where possible, use your hero as a meat shield to keep your units alive for the 8 second ability duration. Your job during any fight would be to zone out the heroes by slowing them and CCing them wherever possible, with the throw shield and shielded charge and thunderstruck abilities. You can use thunderstruck to break starwalk block or break unit formations, allowing your units to wiggle in. When there are no heroes, make use of your short sword's high DPS by attacking the units from behind wherever possible. Chapter 5 Pros, Cons, and Summary the short sword and shield in my opinion is a high skill cap weapon class which can take a while to master. Unlike the maul and polex which are relatively easy to use and master, the short sword will feel very unrewarding to use at times until you have unlocked all abilities including the ultimate to level 3. Despite this, once mastered, the short sword is one of the ultimate hero killing CC frontline brawler class in the game. This is a class everyone should consider playing as it can be really fun and rewarding.
If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to support my channel. This motivates me to make guides just like this. I also stream on Twitch regularly, so make sure to check out the descriptions for the link. And as always, I hope you all have a lovely day.